a dino. It goes rawr. You say yellow? Yeah. She's been saying blue. She did say blue. 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 My name is Sam McCloskey. My daughter Lydia was diagnosed with brain damage to the right side of her brain from birth. She also developed a seizure disorder from the brain damage. You gotta open your eyes. Hi. It was heartbreaking to see your little baby who at her age you expect her to be smiling, hitting these milestones, you know, learning how to walk, talk, do these things. And instead our baby was, you know, pretty much not having control of her body. <laughs> we gotta feed the cows today and then uh, we gotta put out uh, two rolls of hay to the big cows. All right. Uh, so, uh, Sounds good. Yep, you ready to roll? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Are you gonna drive the truck? Yeah. My name is Valerie. And uh, my name is George. We are parents of David. There you go. And at three years old, he was diagnosed with epilepsy. He had had a febrile seizure uh, back when he was uh, ten, oh, ten, months old. 10 months old, three years later. He would be playing with his toys and then he would jump up like he was just, something had scared him. And he would run over to us and he'd hug us and we'd pat on him and then he'd look back at you like, why am I over here? And he would go back to whatever he's doing. That was when we first noticed there was something wrong. What's my name? Mm -hmm. Almost immediately he was put on medication because he was having these episodes daily for multiple times a day. It was uh, scary, a lot of fear, because I had never been around anybody with seizures or epilepsy. What's your name? I don't know. Mm -hmm. I'm Ian Muchnick, I'm a pediatric neurosurgeon at Norton Children's, and I'm the surgical director of the Pediatric Epilepsy Program and Pediatric Restorative Neuroscience Program here. Epilepsy is very complicated. We don't really understand the brain very well. It's probably helpful to keep in mind, until 1970, we really couldn't look at a brain unless we opened the skull, right? And then CT changed that, and then MRI changed that even more. And we're really just now learning how to put together data sets that allow us to understand how the brain processes information normally and in epilepsy abnormally. Dr. Mudgnick, he's the best of the best. He is so good at what he does. Dr. Mudgnick is one of the few doctors that I noticed talk to David, not just to us. That was a huge first impression for me because that told me that he cared about David. Hey guys. Hey. How's it going? Good. Nice to see y'all. Good to see you. How I approach patients with complicated surgical problems is to always remember that it is very important to be able to, in understandable terms, take an incredible amount of information, help people feel like they understand that information, and facilitate a good choice. It's a big decision. I want you to feel good about this, and I'm not here to tell you how to feel good about it. I'm here to respect how you feel good about it. I'm Dr. Caracas. I'm a pediatric neurologist and epileptologist at Norton Children's. Here at Norton Children's, we are using a cutting edge 3D technology called surgical theater to lead the path to treat the children with epilepsy. 
Mm -hmm. Here you can see the hippocampus and the amygdala, which have been segmented. We collaborate surgical theater into our team meetings in multiple ways. Right now, standard of care is to take a separate look at a bunch of two-dimensional data sets and then corroborate those data sets in our heads. That doesn't really allow for the subtle anatomical distinctions that we really need to make in epilepsy. What this allows us to do is take all of those 2D data sets and put them into a single 3D model, which allows for a lot more precise discussion about where it is and where it isn't. And that has been a real focus. This is a directly sort of vertex down axial view, and you can see how skewed this is. I think the 3D technology has helped our patients. It's just so much more intuitive, right? It helps them to understand what we're doing and why. He took us into like his uh, working room where he had all these monitors set up and on the monitor, it was Lydia's brain. You know, it wasn't just a brain, it was Lydia's brain. And he showed me where he was gonna operate, the things he was gonna do. And it was just so crazy to see like her actual brain and to know that he was able to practice these things on her actual brain before he went in and did it. It just made me feel like my daughter is in good hands. The orange is the hippocampus, the purple is your amygdala, and that little, that blue thing that's kind of running by it, that's the ventricle, it's a water space in your head. Seeing my brain in VR headset was uh, pretty neat. I thought it was awesome. It just made us feel relief. Seeing the 3D technology gave me hope. Because everything was lining up, because he could show us, this is what's going on, and this is where it is, and this is what we aim to do. In the hours leading up to Lydia surgery, I had so many emotions going on. It was just a mixture of everything, happy, sad, excited, all of the emotions you can imagine. I was so ready to hopefully see an end to her daily seizures and allow her to have a quality of life that she hadn't yet. But on the other side, you know that there can always be complications and stuff go on. So it was very, very nerve wracking just thinking about how she gonna get through this. Hemispherotomies are complicated procedures that require a knowledge of normal anatomy, but when the anatomy is so grossly distorted, all of the normal landmarks are gone, especially in hers. What surgical theater allowed our epilepsy team to do was create a disconnection plan, as well as to generate a bunch of landmarks that were specific to that plan. And then because we could take that plan and put it not only into a navigation system, but literally through Sync AR into my eyepieces so that as I'm operating on her tissue underneath the microscope, I could see my artificial landmarks. It allowed us to do a functional hemispherotomy on a kid with grossly abnormal anatomy. Good baby. Look at you, that's so good. Can you say bye-bye? Lydia today is doing very awesome after surgery. She is really just moving right along in her development and she's also seizure-free, which is very incredible and amazing. I have no doubts that it's not gonna be long at all before Lydia is gonna be up and walking. I'm very excited for that day and we'll probably cry my eyes out. Happy tears. <laughs>
once we decided that it was a selective amygdala hippocampectomy that needed to happen, we were able to take the volume of our targeted ablation and use it to optimally create trajectories that would increase our chances of meeting that goal. We wouldn't have been able to do his case without surgical theater or an army of PhD people dedicated to this, which is not really practical, especially given how many epilepsy patients require surgical care now around the country. In past, basically, people had to do open resections. So when you do this, imagine you are basically exposing brain to the air, to a lot of infection, bleeding maybe, the hospital stay is longer and all. But now, you are able to send the patient home the next day. We were actually shocked that, you know, he, he didn't have to spend a whole lot of time in the hospital. He was actually just ready to come home right away. I used to have, like, I remember about three seizures a day and taking about 14 pills. I'm only taking, like, six pills now, and I'm awake more often. He's just way more active than he used to be. You know, there were times he would just go straight to bed, but now it's nothing for him to go out at 9 o'clock in the dark underneath the light and go play basketball because he just wants to do something. It's all in his eyes, really. He's just lit up after the surgery. I like running sometimes. I'm able to drive now. My parents trust me to drive a little bit on my own around the farm, at least. I'm just so thankful for what's happened in my life and that I'm able to do things that I used to not be able to do. The message that I would want to send to Dr. Muchnick and to the team at Norton Children's is thank you for giving me my kid back. Thank you so much because we went from mama if I ever get to drive to when I get my driver's license. He's got his permit and a truck sitting out there right now that's his and uh, thank you for that. I am forever grateful to Dr. Munchnick and his team at Norton Children's. The support that they have shown to us, even going beyond the surgical side of things, it made all the difference in the world. I've always been motivated by patient outcomes. That's where the meaning of the work really becomes tangible for me. So it's really great to see David Hunt driving. It's great to see Lydia not being burdened by a ridiculously abnormal hemisphere, which was literally dragging her down, and see her rise, even after this sort of big dramatic surgery. So for me, that's actually the whole reason for doing this. <laughs>